I receive comments on my videos all the time, basically asking me, what is the best distribution to try KDE on? And I answer the same way every time, KDE Neon. And that's what we're taking a look at today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is made possible by the eBuzz Central store. Do you use Linux? Do you love Linux? And do you like showing people that you do? Well, this is the place to come. We have everything from t-shirts and hoodies, mugs, water bottles, stickers, phone cases, you name it, we pretty much have it. We have everything from Arch, Debian, all the way down to Linux Mint, Manjaro. It just really is what your heart desires. And we have new products coming very soon. I've been taking everybody's suggestions and running with it. So, if you would, zip on over, take a look at the store. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if there's something you would like to see on the store that's not there, let us know in the comments below, and we'll do our best to get it on the store. So, we're going to zip back on over to KDE Neon's website. And if you come to their website, which is neon.kde.org, I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. This is the screen you're met with. Now, one of the reasons I always recommend KDE Neon for somebody that's new to KDE is for the simple fact that KDE makes this distribution. It is produced by the KDE team, and it's based on the Ubuntu long-term support option, which means you're going to have something very solid and very functional. And if you scroll down, it tells you that it's solid core latest features, and you're going to have the most recent features in KDE. And then if you come down here, you've got their products, development, resources, destination, and then, of course, all the places you can reach them on social. Now, you can also run KDE in the cloud. You can do that through shells. Now, that is something that costs money, so I'm just letting you know that right off the bat. And if you do do it, KDE gets a small commission for people that do zip on over to shells. And then you come back to the top of the page, you have Frequently Asked Questions, Developer Edition, KDE Slimbook, and then Download KDE Neon. And if you click Download, you've got several different options here. This is the User Edition, which is the one you want to run if you want to give it a test drive or go ahead and install it on your system. Then you do have a Testing Edition, which comes with pre-release KDE software. They're built the same day from bug fix branches. So... This isn't a daily driver, this is just one that you can play around with. Then they do have an unstable edition, and then they do have a developer edition. But most of you out there are going to want to use the user edition. And this is where you would download it. You just click here, and it automatically starts downloading. So let's zip on over to KDE Neon's desktop. And if you download KDE Neon, throw it on a USB, or open it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. It's going to be the base KDE desktop. It's not going to be riced like other distributions do. This is your introduction to KDE. If you're somebody that's been on other desktop environments and you want to give KDE a solid chance, this is the place to come because, honestly, it's the most stable because it's put out by the KDE team, and it's the most dependable. And as you can see, you got a nice background right here. If you right-click, you can go to Configure Desktop and Wallpaper, and we'll go ahead and maximize that. And you're going to have all your KDE-themed wallpapers, as you can see right here. It comes with some great wallpapers, and if you've used other distributions with a version of KDE, you'll recognize some of these wallpapers. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. If you come down to the bottom, you do have one panel, and as you can tell, it does have transparency on it. Over here to the right, you've got Show Desktop, you've got your date and time, and then you do have hidden icons right here, which is notifications, clipboard, night color control, vaults, lock key status, KDE Connect, internet, most recent USB device, battery charging, and volume. Now, if you right-click on the panel, you can enter edit mode, and right here, you've got several different things you can do. You can go over to more options. You can change your panel alignment from left, center, or right. You can do visibility, always visible, auto hide, windows can cover, windows go below, opacity, adaptive, opaque, translucent. So you got a lot of adjustments there. You can also adjust your panel height right here if you would like to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it what it came with. And you can go to add widgets. And this will bring up your list of widgets over here. You can pretty much do anything you want with these widgets. You can drop them down into your panel 
or you can drop them to your desktop. You just find the widget that you want, grab it, let's say weather, drag it to your desktop, and now you have it. All you gotta do is click configure, and it'll bring up, and you can choose a location. I'm gonna go ahead and put in Dallas, Texas. And as you can see, you've got Iowa, Dallas, Texas. Let's go ahead and pick that. Select and apply. And then if you come over here, you can move that around. And there you go. You have your weather for Dallas, Texas. Now, if you don't want that widget to stay there, all you got to do is go over here and click on remove and it'll go away. So we will go ahead and close out. But before I do, now, if you're looking for a specific widget and you can't find it on that list, all you got to do is go to get new widget, download new plasma widgets and this little store type thing will come up. You can do a search for your widget or you can just scroll through and look at different widgets and pick it that way, okay? So it's a real easy way to customize your system and KDE is known for that. So let's go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. And then if you come over here to the left, you've got settings. Let's go ahead and open up your settings. I won't go too in depth with the settings because I do have a specific video where I went over different settings and ways to customize KDE. I will link that at the end of this video if you want to know more information about that. And then if you come up here, you've got your base light and dark. If you wanted to switch to dark, just click on dark and apply. And it changes everything over to dark. And then clicking on files opens them. That's a single click or you can set it to double click like you're used to with let's say like a Windows if you want. And then you've got more behavior settings. And then over here, you've got a long list of different settings you can adjust. You've got everything from appearance, workspace behavior, window management, startup and shutdown, notifications, connections, settings, input devices. And like I said, the other video that I did on this, I went in depth on it, so it will be linked at the end of this video. Now, if you wanna come over and look at about system, we open that up. You've got KDE Plasma version 5.24.3, which is the most recent version. KDE Frameworks version 5.91, most recent, and of course, QT version 5.15.3. You're running kernel version 5.13.0-35 generic, and then of course your graphics are X11. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of settings. The next icon we have down here is the Discover Software Center. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. This is where you're gonna come if you wanna download and install software. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And of course, you get some suggestions right off the bat which is Krita, Digicam, KTorrent, KDE Software Development, Color Paint. These right here are pretty much KDE-based programs, so they're going to be obviously offered to you right up front. And then if you go down here, you can look up and see what's installed. And then, of course, your settings and about and update. Right now, we've got a system upgrade. We've got five packages to upgrade. We're not going to do that because I'm presently in a virtual machine. And then you can go up to Applications. And right here, it lets you know you can install this. KDE Plasma Desktop is already installed. And let's say you wanted to install something like Bitwarden. All you do is come over here and click Install. And it's a flat pack. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I don't want it to install because I'm in a virtual machine. So flat packs are installed out of the box and they are being utilized. And then you've got different categories over here you can install from. Or, of course, you could come up here and do a search for whatever application and install it from there. So I'm going to go ahead and close the Discover Software Center. Then we're going to open up Dolphin, which is your file manager. We will go ahead and maximize this. And I've went over Dolphin several times. I really enjoy using Dolphin. There are some people out there that don't. They think it's too complicated or it's just not their cup of tea. For me, I really like it. And if you get used to using it and finding out how you can actually adjust things in it, it makes it a lot easier to get around. Just like over here, like remote, if you don't want that to show, all you got to do is right click and hide it. Recents, you can get rid of that as well. And then devices, we'll leave that. And then if you want to right click down here, go to icon size. Let's bump that up a little bit. Then you get some bigger, better looking icons up here. Okay. These are your usual suspects right here. And your home folders are right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out a Dolphin. And then you have Firefox as your primary web browser. If you come over here to the app launcher, you've got a basic app launcher right here. You can see that. Now, if you wanted to go with a different app launcher, all you got to do is right click and then show alternatives. And then you've got an application dashboard or application menu. Now, if you go to dashboard and go ahead and switch and then open that, 
you get the full screen dashboard, which I actually like. A lot of people I know don't, but I do like it. And then if you come over here as you scroll down through, it'll show you your different applications, or you can do a search right here and it will bring it right up for you, okay? So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Go ahead and right click, show alternatives again, and you could go to an application menu, which you would be more used to seeing in something like Mate or an old school Linux Mint type distribution. Okay, it really just comes down to what your personal preference is. So let's go ahead and open this back up. You've got all applications. You've got graphics, internet, multimedia. You get VLC player, office. You get ocular settings. You get system settings, system. You've got system monitor. You've got console. You got info center. Let's go ahead and open up console. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this and see if they have HTOP installed and they don't. So we'll zip on over to top. And right now, I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. We, at present, are using 835 megabytes, which isn't bad at all. It's not what you would call lightweight, but it's not bloated either. It's what you would expect with a KDE operating system that's going to have a little bit more bells and whistles than some of your other desktop environments. So it's just something you have to get used to. And even at that, it's still one-third of the RAM usage of a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 machine. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's sit back down to the applications, and then you've got system. We just looked at utilities, emoji selector, k Write, and spectacle, and then, of course, help. So that's just a quick look at the newest release of KDE Neon. If you are somebody that has never used KDE before and you want to use it in a stable environment to get used to it, to see what KDE has to offer, KDE Neon is the way to go. Download it, throw it on a USB, open it in a virtual machine, and take it for a test drive. If that's something you might do, let me know in the comments below. And when you get a chance, zip on over to the Ebo Central store. If you find something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And like I said, if there was something you'd like to see on the store that's not there, let us know about it. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.